Hey guys, Chris with HobbyKing.com coming at you with another daily. Today we're actually talking about the Quantum QFX new flight controller. So we're going to go with a little bit different format today. I'm actually going to open a box and we're going to go through this. There's a lot to this controller. I want everyone to understand what they're getting. Now this is a plug and play kit. It doesn't mean you just plug it in and your quadcopter is ready to go. You definitely have to do some a little bit of setup, but it's got a really good graphical user interface that we're going to go through. But, uh, but by plug and play, what I mean is that everything in the box is designed to work with one another. You just plug it into each other. There's no configurations. Uh, everything there is set. So let's go ahead and pop this open and take a look at what you get in this kit. So first thing you're going to notice, you, you have the flight controller, it has GPS and compass module in a separate and it also has a nice pedestal stand which allows you to get the magnometer up and away from anything that might interfere with the magnometer. So with the flight controller, first thing you'll notice, USB port. You just plug it in and we're going to go through the software in a minute as far as the settings and firmware updates and everything you can do on it. On this side of the controller, it has the outputs. Now it has six motor outputs so it can be for a quad or a hex and it supports X and plus modes. The other thing it has on it is GPS in, uh, LED, and power. Now we're going to talk about the power module and the, uh, the beak that comes with it here in a second. On this side we have all our inputs, our standard four channels, so we got throttle, rudder, aileron, and elevator, as well as a third channel for selecting flight modes, uh, and then two outputs for gimbal, pan and tilt. So we already talked about the GPS and the compass, it has a really nice uh, pedestal mount and if we lift this out look at some of the other accessories that comes in this kit. Alright first thing I'm going to pull out is the beak. So this isn't an ordinary beak. This beak was designed to work specifically with this flight controller. It does a couple functions. It has a LED indicator which we'll go over those functions in a second. It provides voltage to the flight controller as well as it's a voltage sensor. It provides voltage feedback so if there's a uh, fail safe like low battery uh, voltage it can uh, do a return to home. It depends on how you set it up in the controller. Also uh, gives you a visual indicator with the LED. It gives you, uh, it lets you know what flight mode you're in as well as GPS status. Uh, we'll go over those functions in a second, but it plugs right into the controller. Other thing it comes with is your servo extensions to go from your receiver into the flight controller. Now one cool thing about this flight controller, it does support SBUS uh, directly in, so you don't have to have four you know, servo wires or five servo wires going in and two to your gimbal. You can, you can actually just use the one if you have an SBUS receiver and plug it straight in and it does support SBUS. Uh, the other thing that we're going to talk about now is the software support. That's a big thing with flight controllers out there is, is how easy is it to use, how well is it supported, and how good is the software, and do I need to go back to school and, and learn coding to get this thing up in the air and working. With this one, absolutely not. So let's take a break. I'm going to uh, shift the cameras over to the computer and we're going to go through some of the functions of the software that comes with this. So I've taken out the disk and popped it in my laptop. When you put it in, you're going to find this quantum folder. Go ahead and click on that and you're going to see several things uh, pop up. First thing I'm going to point out is the PDF manual. I'll just pull it up and this is an extremely well written user manual. It uh, goes over everything from initial setup and wiring to uh, setting up your uh, or calibrating your compass and your gyros. Um, anyway, it's in there and you'll be able to take a look at that on the disk. The next three things are just drivers. Disregard those. If your computer's not up to date, it'll ask that update to the latest .NET, and that's all that is. This folder right here is videos. Now in here, you're going to find some very well produced videos that go step by step on everything from calibrating the compass uh, to uh, initial setup as well as how to do firmware updates with this. So you're definitely going to be able to be successful with this flight control with these videos. And the last folder up here is the actual software itself. Now it has the latest firmware in here as well as a param file and we'll go over that in just a second. But the quantum tools is what you're mainly going to be using. Uh, now you also notice it has a very well written PDF manual for the tools which goes over all the settings and it allows you to understand exactly what it is you're changing if you need to change anything. So we'll scroll through this and you just get a couple ideas of the screens and gives you a uh, a well-written explanation of what that setting does. Now, let's go ahead and pop in the software and take a look at it. You can go ahead and just expand this out. Now, first thing on the bottom, it is connected right now, and I actually have the flight controller plugged in, and you can see yaw, tilt, and it's all there working, and it's just plugged in via the USB. So on this first one, if we had the battery uh, beak uh, plugged in we'd actually be getting a battery voltage in here and we have voltage compensation which allows you to calibrate it to your specific battery. Now under control this is kind of more of an expo feature uh, allows you to uh, set up how much uh, your RC transmitter has influence over this. Now under the balancing tab it 
it allows you to uh, fine-tune your gimbal control as well as balance and altitude control basically uh, how much weight each setting has over the other now under remote control this is the one that I really want to talk about this is where you're going to calibrate and if I had a receiver plugged into this we'd be able to see these values moving back and forth it has a calibration process so you just plug it in and you roll through it and you basically set up everything and allows you to reverse everything here so you don't need to do it on your transmitter but right here under the modes let's talk about this you have three available so you need a three position switch on your transmitter so if we click down the first one uh, in the switch, if I had it hooked up and flipped the switch, it would be blue in this area, which would indicate this one is selected. Now let's go over the available flight modes. You have manual mode, which is pretty self-explanatory. We have balance mode, and think of this as auto level. When you let go of the stick, the quadcopter or multi-rotor is essentially going to re-level itself. Now balance with altitude, it's essentially an altitude with auto leveling. So if you set it to a set altitude, and as long as your throttle position is within a dead range of 50%, close to the middle, it's going to hold that altitude using the in internal barometric sensor. Now, under balance, uh, altitude, and GPS, it's going to also hold GPS. Where this is just manually leveling itself, if there was wind, it would still drift. With GPS hold, it's going to hold that position. Now, under go home, there's uh, essentially, we call it a... a five flight modes uh, plus two. Now under go home, if you were to select this, it's a return to home feature. Essentially, if you were to initiate this via the three position switch, it would fly back to you. It, it climbed to a safe altitude, uh, 10 meters above wherever it was armed, fly back to you, but essentially it would just stay there and hover. So it's just, if you were to get disoriented and you just needed to fly back to where you could get visual reference on it again, uh, this is a great feature. Now, if you were to also initiate fail-safe, meaning you drop the throttle below 10%, it would actually do an auto land feature. So you can set up different flight modes, and it's just as easy as clicking and setting whatever you want. And you could confirm with a uh, receiver plugged in, it would just go blue here, blue here as you flipped it, so you could have a visual reference of what you have. Now, we also talked about the firmware. Now, as far as the firmware, if we look at the PID settings, they're just blank in here. And that PRAM file that I was talking about earlier essentially has a base. 80% uh, of multi-rotors out there will be able to use that PRAM and start flying pretty well right off the bat. You can come in here and do some fine-tuning from there. But under firmware, first thing you want to do is go ahead and update to the latest firmware, and that was in that file as well. Um, and naturally, as uh, flight controllers progress, there'll be new flight modes and new firmware out there, so we'll keep that updated as well. So under flight frame, this option allows you to select what kind of multi-rotor you have, whether it be a quad or a hex, uh, whether it be plus or X mode. And right along the bottom, you're going to notice uh, we have read, import, export, and write. So as you change or do certain things, I'm going to go ahead and click read. And if we come back to the PIDs, you can now see it's been populated. You can change these settings and essentially export them and save them and play with your, your tune, essentially. And uh, if something isn't quite right, you can always revert back to the, the, the saved ones. Like I was telling you, we do have that file already on there, which is a, a base that you can use, but the set, the, the ones that come in the controller already uh, will definitely get you started. Um, one other thing I want to point out here is idle speed. Uh, essentially, when you arm it, it's going to have the prop start spinning on it, uh, and you can set that to where you want or none, as well as under the balance, it has altitude control. Now, this does, in a couple of those uh, uh, flight modes like altitude, what happens is that the the throttle stick needs to be right at the 50% range. And this allows you to adjust for that uh, depending on the power and the weight of your quadcopter, if it's overpowered or underpowered, so that you can make sure your throttle setting is right in the midpoint so it knows whether you actually want it to climb and adjust the dead band rate in there. Anyway, guys, this is uh, very intuitive software. It's fairly easy to use. Uh, the user manuals uh, that are available right back here uh, are fairly easy to use. Uh, this is up on the new items page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as always, we'll see you next time.